Thanks for coming to DoTheyRepresentYou.com. My name is Father Josiah, and I am a local pastor here in the lovely city of Riverside, where I've lived for about 20 years. I have a brief but important message for you, and I bring this message not as a pastor or in any official capacity, but simply as an individual, as a citizen of Riverside, a voting member of District 41, and an American. Over the last two years, our city of Riverside has endured unprecedented harassment from outside special interest groups who are trying to enforce their agenda upon our city, and indeed upon every city and town. Our city was threatened two years ago with litigation from a group from Washington, D.C. because of our historic Sarah Cross on Mount Rubidoux. It took thousands of dollars and hundreds and hundreds of man hours to protect our own history and our own culture. We did it, but what a travesty that we had to. Now, a new irony has arisen in our town. Just as the Sarah Cross controversy subsided in 2012, a sad irony rose in our community. We elected a new congressman to be our representative here in District 41, Mr. Mark Tucano. Mark had run unsuccessfully for Congress in 1992 and 1994, but in 2012, his constituency, our district, had decided that it was time to give Mark a chance to serve us as our representative in the U.S. Congress. I describe this as a sad new irony because of the way that Mr. Tucano has repaid the electorate here. During the first 18 months of Mr. Tucano's freshman tenure as a congressman, I was terribly saddened to see his disregard for his local constituency. And instead, he zealously promoted his own agenda and that of several special interest groups. And if he acted this way as a freshman in Congress, you can only imagine how he might act in disregard of his constituency in the future. His zealous advocacy has been in three main areas. The promotion of abortion, the radical gay agenda above everything else, and an attack on religious freedom. I'm not in any way suggesting by the facts that I am now presenting to you that Mr. Takano has not done some good things as our congressman, nor yet that somehow he's the devil or something like that. He's not. I have no animus against Mark in presenting these facts to you. But on the most important values of a culture, the protection of human life, the protection of marriage and the family, which is the very cornerstone of a successful civilization, and the protection of religious freedom, Mr. Takano has forgotten us. He has forgotten who he is representing. He has forgotten District 41, and instead, he has promoted his own personal agenda and that of powerful special interest groups from outside our area, and that a representative, a congressman, is not supposed to do. The first issue where Congressman Tagano is pushing his own agenda and not that of his constituency is the issue of abortion, and not just abortion, but the subject of late-term abortion. No one can deny that abortion is a terribly polarizing issue in America. Though a majority of Americans now self-identify as pro-life, the issue still divides enough for any politician to walk sensitively on the matter. There is one aspect of abortion, however, that the vast majority of Americans agree upon, and that is that late-term abortion is horrible. Most Americans want limitations on advanced-term abortion, and even the minority of Americans that would defend legalized abortion, even the killing of an unborn child right up until the moment of its birth, even they know that late-term abortion is a tragic and sad act. 
We here in District 41 certainly believe that. Who would trivialize such a terrible thing? Sadly, Mark Takano would. Congressman Takano chose to trivialize the killing of well-developed unborn children and make a joke out of it in his official social media communications. Mr. Takano praised a pro-abortion state senator from Texas for defending late-term abortion, even though the vast majority of Texans opposed it. He created a political cartoon celebrating the push for late-term abortion. He called pro-abortion political efforts to defend the late-term abortion the best filibuster in the history of America. Does Mr. Takano represent your feelings about late-term abortion? Do you agree with him that the killing of advanced-stage fetuses in pregnancy should be a matter of cartoons and jokes? I don't think so. And therefore, we're left with the question, exactly whose agenda is Mr. Takano promoting? The second major issue where Congressman Takano is foisting his own agenda instead of ours is his promotion of the radical gay agenda. I don't have any problem with Mr. Takano being gay. And even though the gay population in our district is minuscule, our voters demonstrated their tolerant and inclusive disposition by voting for Mr. Takano. Mr. Takano, however, was not elected because he was gay. Nor, I believe, did our district elect Mr. Takano so that he could go to Washington, D.C. and become the leading advocate for the radical gay agenda in all of the U.S. Congress. But that is exactly what has taken place. It was only six years ago, and this is the great irony, it was only six years ago that the California Supreme Court foisted a new definition of marriage upon the citizens of the state of California, contrary to the citizens' will. In response to this judicial overreach, more than 7 million Californians passed Proposition 8, simply keeping the traditional definition of marriage as between a man and a woman. In fact, Riverside was the state champion of Proposition 8. In no region in the entire state of California did Proposition 8 pass by a greater margin than it did here in Riverside, where we passed it by 64.7% nearly two-thirds of voters. We voted to resist the redefinition of marriage. We voted to protect man-woman marriage and mother-father families. Congressman Tucano knows this about his district. He knows what we think. So why has he become the leading advocate for redefining marriage in the U.S. Congress? Why has he become the champion of gay activism in the Congress? Do you know that when Mr. Tucano was given one minute to introduce himself on the floor of the House of Representatives, he did not say one thing about the city of Riverside in our district. Instead, he chose to talk about himself and how proud he was to be the first openly gay congressman from Riverside. Nothing about us, everything about him. Did you know that he wasted no time writing letters to President Obama and to the Department of Justice, asking that they strike down Proposition 8, and in fact, not just calling for its overthrow, but saying that Proposition 8 was prejudiced? I asked Mr. Takano face-to-face why he called me and two-thirds of his constituency bigots. We are not prejudiced because we want to keep marriage the way it has always been in our culture, and the way that our religions ask us to believe in it, between a man and a woman. How brash for him to suggest otherwise. Did you know that Congressman Tucano has also spoken in our public high school assemblies to our young people, telling our youth that they need to support gay marriage as a civil right, and that if they don't, they're denying the civil rights and our prejudiced people? As if being gay is like being black, As if supporting man-woman marriage is like promoting slavery. I've met with quite a few black pastors of the black community here in Riverside, and they do not agree with that evaluation 
and are deeply offended at the bogus comparison. And Congressman Takano is now saying publicly that he wants the gay agenda to go even further. Is he representing Riverside? Or is he appeasing the tolerance tyrants who want tolerance for themselves but don't extend it to those with whom they disagree? Is he representing Riverside? Or is he, in fact, promoting the Lavender Mafia who demand companies fire their employees if they ever financially supported Proposition 8? The third area where Congressman Takano is pushing his own agenda and disregarding that of his constituency is his disregard for religious freedom. Many Americans have noted with great concern the last two years to see so much attack on America's first and fundamental liberty, and that is the ability to have religious freedom and to live your life without having your conscience molested. In fact, in the last year, more than 90 pieces of litigation are in the court system right now protecting Christian universities, Christian businesses, Christian charities and hospitals from the unjust imposition of the Affordable Care Act, which demands that these businesses provide insurance coverage for abortion, contraception, and sterilization services. And that's apart from all of the lawsuits that have been brought by the LGBT community against business owners who are being asked to participate in and celebrate same-sex marriage, even when it's against their conscience to do so. It's as though religious freedom now means you can do what you want within the walls of your church instead of its traditional, classic American meaning, which is that you can live before your God and according to your conscience in the public square without molestation. Sadly, Congressman Takano is no supporter of religious freedom. It's as though today we're being asked to check our consciences at the doors of our house when we go to work. It's as though we have to walk through the doors of our businesses and no longer hold the traditional American moral compass that we have to guide our standards. In fact, now we have to accept a new morality, or perhaps it might be better called a new immorality. And the government and the LGBT community, they're not just asking, they're demanding compliance. The consequences of not complying with the Affordable Care Act mean very expensive, sometimes crippling fines against Christian universities, hospitals, and businesses. And think of all the lawsuits that are right now coming against Christian business owners. Mr. Takano himself is all for this new forced system of participation. In fact, he recently criticized the Supreme Court, in its decision to protect the conscience rights of the owners of Hobby Lobby. Congressman Takano, in fact, demands that religious business owners cooperate with this imposition. He wants all religious business owners to provide abortion services to their employees or else. Where is the tolerance that Mr. Takano, as a gay minority, says he cherishes? I think it's just for him and not for those with whom he disagrees. Hmm. I wish circumstances were other than they are. I certainly don't enjoy bringing these matters to your attention. I have met with Congressman Takano myself. I know Mark. I've hosted him in my parish. I've asked him to talk more deeply with the clergy and the faith community in his district, so that he can understand our concerns. I've asked him to cease his promotion of these agendas, which don't reflect the ideas of his own constituents. But sadly, my efforts have fallen on deaf ears. Perhaps the only voice that Congressman Takano understands and can hear is the voice of the voters in the voting booth. Our district elected Congressman Takano two years ago to go to Congress as our representative and to lobby and vote 
for our agenda and our concerns. Most of us hoped the best for Mark. We wanted him to have a good freshman term. We wanted him to be an authentic representative of our people. That is why we call our congressmen representatives. And that is what our congressmen are supposed to do, represent the people of their district. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, my name is Mark Ticano. I, I represent the 41st District of California. This is indeed a victory uh, for the people of my state. Um, I challenge every clerk in the state of California to start issuing marriage licenses to uh, every couple uh, that desires one today. I feel jubilation. I feel, uh, I feel fabulous. I feel every gay word I can think of. Um, <laughs> <laughs>